Welcome everybody to the Best Book Bits podcast. I'm with my guest today, Tim Beanland. For those who do not know Tim, Tim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Michael, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm basically a massive marketing nerd. I love everything to do with consumer behavior, what gets people's attention, and then how you can use that attention to get a des- desirable result. Um, I fell into podcasting uh, three or four years ago because I saw the marketing benefits off the back end, and I uh, have some amazing guests on Jim Penman, uh, James Whitaker, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and uh, Stephen Thomas, who wrote Business Networking for Dummies. So that's a little bit about me, but yeah, thank, thank you, Michael, for, for giving me the platform and, and having me on. No problem. And you're the the host of... Uh, The Experts Blueprint. The Experts Blueprint. Blueprint, yes. Uh, Where I I speak to experts who uh, have proven success in a vertical and uh, are experts in that vertical. We speak solely on that and give those practical advices. So, so yeah, that's that's what I do. uh, How did you fall into podcasting? I kept walking away from conversations with people, uh, mentors like like Fabian, uh, like Jordan Crawley, um, yourself even. You know, we met we met at, a, at an event. And you told me about your YouTube channel. Um, walked away from these conversations, going, "Why the heck didn't I record that? There was so much value." And I was trying to third hand kind of say these lessons. I'd, I'd walk away. I'd do these selfie videos, but. As you know, like if you try and sell something to a business owner and then they try and tell their business partner, third hand, things aren't as good. So I figured, why don't I go directly to the source and interview these people that I'm having these, um, having these amazing conversations with? Um, so, so then I just got a, I got a camera, I got a Zoom, Zoom H5 recorder and went off and started doing podcasts and four years later, I am where I am. Yeah, well, and I see you've had uh, Jim Penman on the the show the other week, which was uh, which was great for the second time. Yeah, Jim is a really fascinating guy. He has built Australia's largest uh, franchising business, the Jim's Group. So your listeners may know Jim's mowing, Jim's cleaning. Um, I've had him on the show twice. So the second time around, I asked him about his passions, and he loves history, he loves science, he funds a lot of scientific projects. And we just jammed on that. And then because of that, he opened up and, and talked about some business stuff that I haven't heard him talk about before. And uh, yeah, it was just really, really fantastic. So Jim Jim has been really kind to me, especially in a world of big players. Um, Jim, Jim's been fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And apart from podcasting, I know that your other hobby is actually content creation with the the guest on your show. Can you sort of elaborate a little bit about sort of the business end of the, the podcasting? Exactly. So I was doing these podcasts as a hobby, but what was happening was the um, business owner was saying stuff about their business that they weren't able to get on camera before. They were opening up. You just can't fake the authenticity of a live interview. So one of these business owners said, hey, can you chop that up for me? And I went, oh, I'm just doing this as a hobby. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and effort to, to edit this out. Um, but he said, I'll pay you. And I went, oh, that's interesting. Okay, there might be something here. So essentially, the marketing benefits of the back end is I can sit down with a client for 45 minutes and interview them and then take that content, split it up into 20 videos, like five to 20 videos, what you and I call value bait, and effectively deliver that as their entire month's worth of content. For example, um, Stefan Thomas, who I'm working with, I've almost doubled his LinkedIn, you know, views and pages and all of that based off the video. He does other stuff. He does pictures and that kind of thing. But since I've been working with him, his content has been out there. As you know, the more you put out there, the more you get seen. So I find that if I can create one to three months worth of content for my clients in 45 minutes of their time, then that's something incredibly powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen it firsthand myself with what you're doing, but also getting um, experts on the, the podcast. You're actually becoming friends with them, consulting with them, but also learning as well. So it's a bit of a full circle. So tell me a little bit about some of the friendships you've made on the journey with podcasting. Mm, yeah, well, I mean, yourself would be one of them. Um, you know, you 
you gave me a lift home um, after a networking event in, in your car and you found out that I had a podcast and then you said, I'll listen to this podcast. You Now, two things could have happened at that intersection. You could have listened to the podcast and gone, this, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about and you could have ran away and, and we, we wouldn't be talking today. Or what did happen was you listened to the show, you said, wow, how old is this guy? Like, and why is he, how has he got all these people on the show? What's going on? You saw something there. So there's that relationship between you and me. And now, now we're on this podcast. I'm helping you with this podcast and, and we're, we're doing some exciting stuff. The other things have been, um, James Whitaker. So James, uh, for people listening along, I'm holding up, um, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. This was approved by the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Um, Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich. So this is a follow-up book where he interviews uh, Grant Cardone. He interviews Barbara Cochran. He interviews John Lee Dumas, um, Brandon T. Adams, uh, Janine Shepard, Bob, Bob Proctor is in this. A lot of big names. So he basically did a Napoleon Hill of this time, um, asking these people how that book, and, and I know your listeners listen and, and read books, and how that book impacted their life. So if you haven't listened to the summary of Think and Grow Rich that, that Michael's done, go and, go and listen to it, because these big names have all implemented the lessons, and um, yeah, really powerful. So, so him, I met James. James was the seventh episode and since then we've developed a friendship and we're friends on facebook um and i think i think two things from that one mm. he's got a famous dad named noel noel whittaker who's uh quite a successful author in australia as well yeah i'm i'm just sorry the audio might be going bad i i'm just going to reach for his book um so in a side note as well why, <laughs> why tim does that they actually have the movie uh think and grow rich as well so not just a book but uh, i believe mm. the movie is online you can watch as well so this is noel um this is one of his his books and this is a book james and noel wrote together called the the beginner's guide to wealth so um you know here's the photo of the two of them so that's quite that's quite awesome and james sent me these books so i think that's cool off my podcast a, an australian who lives in america three years later has sent me copies of his books i think that's really cool yeah, and I, I think another thing which the audience would love to hear that you're actually the podcaster's podcaster. I mean, you run a quite successful Facebook group with uh, podcasters and coach them and train them how to set up podcast interview guest. Uh, and uh, I can proudly say that you're one of my coaches with uh, podcasting. So uh, do you want to tell them a little bit about what you do with teaching podcasters? Oh, well, first of all, <laughs> sorry. Um, first of all, it's it's my honor to be your podcast coach. Um, we've done a few calls and, and we're actually using a platform, Riverside, that I recommend people use for remote interviews. Um, yeah, I run a, a Facebook group called How to Start a Podcast. With my clients, I take them from, I've kind of got a podcast idea, I sort of want to do this thing, all the way through to reality. I'm ready to record, I'm ready to do this with cover art, with um, an outro sorted, an intro sorted, all in an afternoon. Um, and I take them through a process now that I've gotten down to realistically two hours. Um, and what I find is people can overcomplicate the podcast process. There's so many things from equipment, from hosting, from um, what should I name the show? How long episodes should be? Um, software, cameras, like all of this stuff comes into your head. And, and when you Google it, you go, oh my God, this is all too much. And you just give up. But I've found that if I can handhold someone and say, I've got four years of experience in podcasting. This is what I do. Here's a proven system. If you implement this and I give you this, you cannot fail, at least in terms of having episodes out there. You cannot fail with that. Um, and I, I get a lot of joy from coaching people like I've coached you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, the the old adage is you, you can't do it by yourself these days. Um, you not, can't be an expert on everything. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert with podcasting, even video creation. So you need to join the people who know what they're doing and then learn from them as well. But uh, yeah, you've, you've done a great Facebook group with the podcasters, but also the networking of that too. And obviously being introduced to other 
you know experts in in their fields as well so um i know we've touched on that but look i know last year was quite hard for you as well with COVID and uh some of the battles that you're dealing with yourself as well and i know you've been quite open and honest about that on on your podcast mm. uh with your guests as well but uh do you want to talk a little bit about sort of um sort of the trials and tribulations you've gone through and and the and the growth that you've gone through in the last couple of months personally i've seen yeah definitely so look life is life is is not all sunshine and, and rainbows now I do have a very positive outlook on life and that actually helps me get get through a lot of this stuff. But um, yeah, about four or five years ago, I was diagnosed with bipolar 2. Now, bipolar 2, different to bipolar 1, which is what a lot of people think of when they hear the word bipolar or they even joke about it, right? They say that person's that person's so bipolar and... Um, you know, in, in terms of jokes, it's actually quite offensive. Um, <laughs> but um, when it comes to bipolar 2, all that means is I've got periods of sustained depression. For example, last year I spent nine months in a depressed dark space. I was, you know, couldn't get out of bed, really heavy feeling, um, just just wasn't wasn't a good time at all. And... Yeah, look, it was it was tough. And then on the flip side of things, I, I have a ability to go into a manic phase where I've got high energy, high drive, high motivation, high passion, don't need to sleep, don't need to eat. I've got these flight of ideas that keep going and very excitable energy. Um, and those are the two sides of it. But the way that I see it is the depression. When you're down and out and you've lost everything, it gives you... A level of insights, learning, and knowledge into yourself that a lot of people don't get. When when everything's been taken away from you, you can then figure out what you want to pick up again. And that's how I started um, really refining what I'm doing this year and, and that kind of thing was in this, I guess if you look at it as a up and down sort of thing, went through that down period. And then as you're coming up, there's like this, this little bit um, on the up period which is really creative and really like insightful of like well my podcast was formerly called been talking with peak performers but why was why don't i like that anymore well i don't like it for a number of reasons so i've changed to experts blueprint since then um it's it's really taken off so so it's it's that but then the the mania the mania gives me a level of energy, passion, drive, motivation, ability to influence people, ideas, and 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 things that that other people, because their brains just aren't wired that way, can't tap into either. Um, you sort of, I've heard you say it once. It's like a bit of a superpower, yeah. which it uh, it sort of is, where a lot of people don't have that ups and downs. You can sort of see the highs, but also understand the lows as well. Um, which gives you clarity that a lot of people uh, don't get. A hundred percent, man. hundred um, percent. It is. It is a superpower. And there are a lot of people out there that do suffer with, with some form of mental illness. And I never know what they're going through. And, and even, even other people with bipolar. But if you can look at the positives of what you have and can actually see it as an advantage, I'll give you a, I'll give you a straight up example, but I'll preface this by saying it's, it's not healthy and I don't do it all the time. My medication has a sedative effect. Um, it just does. If I don't take that medication, I don't need to sleep. So when I need to push hard and I need to do some work and stay up till 1am or 2am, that's not a hard thing for me to do at all. Again, going to preface it by I don't do that all the time because it's dangerous. It's a slippery slope, but I'll do it for one night and then, and then I'm done. Like then I'll have, I'll have proper rest. I'll have proper rest the next day. But you know, sometimes as business owners, we need to push hard and, and, I've got this lucky ability to push hard when I need to. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I applaud you for being so open on your podcast with your guest as well. And I've, I've noticed by being a fan of your podcast and listening to some of the guests, when you actually talk about it, it gives them an opportunity to tell their stories as well regarding mental health, um, upbringings and things like that as well. But 
putting that aside, what, what are the sort of things you're working on the next sort of 24 months and excited about? Where, where are you moving towards your content creation, podcast? What's the next step for, for Tim Bingham? Yeah, well, can I publicly talk about what we're working with? You can, yeah. We are working on something behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah I mean, depending on when this airs, it might already be happening. But um, what we found was I was creating these value-based content for my clients. I was creating them 5 to 20 videos that are two minutes long that they were saying really amazing stuff about their business, putting out on social media and getting an amazing result. Um what we both found, you were doing the book summaries. So you're summarizing books. You've built an amazing platform of book lovers and hello to everyone listening along who has supported Michael. But the thing that we've, we've now realized is both of our target markets are keynote speakers, authors, and business owners that want to increase their influence. So I can come and do the video editing side of things and the interview side of things, even though you're, you're doing the interview as well. We've now got two podcasts that they can be on. And effectively give them this channel of a hundred thousand people that they can they can be put in front of, but not just a PR play. We're doing a marketing play on the fact that we're giving them this content that they can put on their social media, which feeds back into the PR of the book, uh, which increases book sales, which gets them more speaking gigs, which increases their relationships that they have with their audience, which gives them an ability to, to really push on their masterminds or whatever it is that they want to do. You and I have the ability to really accelerate that. And, and that's what I'm really excited about. That, about. Yeah, same. And, and just to touch on that, one of the things I'm passionate about is introducing my readers to, to new authors and, and new people. Um, there's an old quote that says the the best doesn't win it's the best known so at the end of the day obscurity is the biggest issue with authors and just sort of putting them in front of new readers and giving readers a new opportunity to to meet new people as well so the whole industry is very small uh from speakers to authors to trainers to coaches to facilitators uh i myself have uh, a sort of a part-time business in the event space and going mm. forward want to host some well, big events down the well, street can, so. well, can i jump in and just yeah. ask you of best book bits what of of the person that is alive what book has gotten the most amount of amount of plays do you know off the top of your head or do you know one that's popular? yeah un unfortunately it was a, one of my first book summaries i did and it's Rhonda burn the secret so yeah i know that uh the okay. secret is the it's a, so, yeah, so, so not unfortunately but uh, a lot of people yeah they, the war of attraction they pick holes um, in your pick holes in your stuff yeah, they, yeah. a little yeah. bit but, but that's uh, probably why it's no. so popular because people are commenting on it which puts it in the algorithm and all that kind of stuff yeah Imagine if you got him on the podcast. Her, Her. Ron I'm Burn. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I yeah. I, I thought he said they recently just did a movie on I Netflix. Thought, uh, the the secret. The I movie, thought he so. said Robert Byrne. So Robin. No, no. Robin, Robin, Byrne. Robin Byrne. She's actually Australian. Right. That lives in America. Right. I yeah. apologise, Robin, if you're li listening okay. to this. <laughs> she won't be listening. <laughs> so imagine if you got Robin on the show, and then she because that's the most popular book summary. Then you do a podcast with Robin that allows her to expand on all of these things in the book. The people that have listened to your summary will listen to the episode and then they'll go, geez, that sounds interesting. Now I'm going to buy the book. So it becomes this amazing thing where Robin can connect with your fans on a much deeper level, but your fans are her fans. So, I mean, that could almost be a target line or a tagline for you is is our fans are your fans um yeah absolutely so actually that's i i really like that i'm glad we recorded it um <laughs> so so yeah that's that's the powerful thing of what you're going to do with your podcast is you can now have these authors on um and you know some of the authors you've already had on um evan carmichael brad burton for example these these people that have written books um have now developed on those concepts so much more than they previously have. It's quite amazing. 
Well, behind the scenes, a lot of people don't know that I actually work with authors around the world, but I don't publicize it. So now I'm actually introducing the authors I work with on the show uh, to basically come out and say hi, give it a quick little interview, but also want to give the opportunity for, for no-name authors to actually come on to and introduce those people to, to, to new readers. What I found over the years doing over 700 book summaries is some of the best books I've actually read are by no-name authors that no one knows who they are, and they won't buy the book because these books aren't in the bookshelf uh, or in the bookshop. So what I do, and I am very, very passionate about introducing authors to new readers. So yes, using the leverage of well-known authors as well, but, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're sort of working together with podcasting, uh, YouTube summaries and things like that as well. So no, it's uh, it's a good partnership and uh, all forward to the mm, future. Definitely, definitely. And um, I know you're a, a keen Essen supporter and you played the Kangaroos. So anyone that's not Australian, a- AFL down here, Aussie rules, we're in lockdown COVID at the moment. Are you a, Ka- uh, are you a Kangas fan? I, I am, oh, so Mate, I, I squandered yeah, the opportunity. I took my brother and his best friend to that game. I should have taken you. No, that's okay. Do you have any um, exciting guests coming on your podcast soon that you'd like to shout out or yeah, mention? Yeah, uh, James Whittaker again. Um, he'll be the first third time guest that I have coming on. So, so really looking forward to developing deeper on some of the concepts and things that James teaches. Um, you will probably be on very soon. Um, it, we've probably put it out by the time this airs. So I'm excited, excited to have you on. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward and, to it. And, um, so yeah, all of those authors, are, are authors and people are, are quite amazing. Looking forward to having them on. So is there anything else you want to talk about or anything exciting happening in your life apart from our little partnership? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that this year I got really laser focused on who my target market is. My target market is so, and, and my pitch, my 60, 60 second pitch. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that right now just, and then I'll, I'll dissect what I did so that when you're going to a networking event or you're going to something, um, I can tell you. So, hi, my name is Tim Beanland. I'm the founder of Bean Talking and host of the Ex- <laughs> Experts Blueprint podcast. With my clients, I work with them to create one to three months worth of video content in 45 minutes of their time. How that works is we sit down once a month week or fortnight we do it virtually or i come and film the content i then go away make it look professional with your branding your subtitles and and possibly music and all done with minimal effort on your behalf and then you have your month's worth of content so if you want to talk to me about it my link is in the chat and you can book a 15 minute call with me now who this has been working for is book authors, keynote speakers, and business owners that want to increase their influence. Now, I got really laser targeted on that. When people say, oh, I work with business owners to do this, that's way too broad. So what I did to dissect it and give you value is at the end there, I spoke about my target market. I spoke about them specifically. They weren't just book offers. They're book offers that want to increase their influence. They weren't just keynote speakers. They're keynote speakers that want to increase their influence. So getting specific on your target market, because every time you have a conversation with someone, you can tell them that. And two things are going to happen. One, they're going to find you a referral. They're going to actually find you a referral because it's easy for them to know if if someone comes across an author that wants to grow his influence, they're going to call me. Two, they might sit back and go, oh, I'm your target market. How can, how can we work together? Like, that happened so much. That happened to me today. That also happened to me as the consumer. I was um, talking to a designer here in Melbourne, and I was just like, who are the clients you work with? And she was like, oh, I do this, this, and this. Even though I'd hired a designer and hi to to Jan, my friend, um, if he's listening. But basically, yeah, that's um, that's what what's what's uh, really exciting is if you understand your target market. She then told me her packages, and I went, oh, I think I'm a customer for you because Jan's busy at the moment. I don't want to over over stress him. So so let's do some work together. So that's the last thing I guess I want to say is is getting to know your target market really deeply gives you an ability to do a 30 second pitch that gets people to pay attention because we're, we're not, we live in a day and age where we want things instantly. We're not here to be fluffed around to get to the point. Tell me who your target market is. Tell me how you can help me and, and we'll, we'll go from there. So, 
um, that's that's what I want to end on. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And uh, for those that don't know, Tim is actually an educated marketer, not like myself who learned marketing through the books. Tim actually went to university and school to, to learn marketing. So uh, don't take my word. Uh, thank you. To Tim. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's something I'm very proud of. Um, so yeah, thank you for saying that. I guess that's probably a good time to sort of wrap up and appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, look forward to many more podcasts coming down at the uh the blueprint is the experts blueprint uh by tim bingland so check that out on spotify links in the show notes below but yeah i've been michael you've been tim and we've been talking so uh that's tim's catchphrase by the way so i appreciate you coming on the show i really appreciate it um if you're listening on thank you for supporting michael and um best book bits he's he puts in a lot of work behind the scenes so keep following this guy he's he's amazing thanks tim